what he fears most. He can't beat you, and he knows it. So I kind of have a new theory on Deucalion's death. Honestly, by the time Deucalion showed up at the end of season six, there was so much going on that I just kind of ignored him. I mean, we'd just been introduced to the United Kingdom's cutest powered couple. In addition to being the third old friend to show up in this one episode, while everyone else was realizing just how much the Hunter War had spread, Deucalion says categorically that he is not fighting. You know my fighting days are over. Eventually the bodies pile up so high that even a blind man can ignore them. Deucalion's protestations, as valid as they are for him due to his violent past, are not helpful in this moment, and they seem somewhat naive to the rest of us as we are gearing up for the coming battle. So I largely ignored his part in this episode. But then I got a question this week about his little speech, and I went back to have a look. So help us stop him. You've realized that stopping Gerard now means killing him. I'm sorry, Scott. That chapter in my life's over. I mean, yeah, this all sounds a bit silly under the circumstances, as Malia rightly points out. So what, you moved into a cave and took a vow of uselessness? So that's it? You're just a pacifist now? What's going to stop me from slashing yeah, your throat? I agree with Sis here. This is super silly in the face of global attacks. But for Deucalion personally, this choice is huge and very difficult. I'm not afraid to lose my eyes again. I'm afraid to lose my soul. I mean, we saw the same thing play out on The Walking Dead. I absolutely hated this Morgan character arc because it was absolutely useless in the face of literal monsters and the overt evil of greedy little men. Why are you doing this? But I believe I'm not right. There is no right. It's just the wrong that doesn't pull you down. It has pulled me down. I think it will. I knocked him out, and I could have killed him. But all life is precious. And TWD ran it in the ground that season, taking time away from important plots over the whole run of that year and attempting to convince the audience just how difficult and unrewarding a life of pacifism could be. I'm afraid to lose my soul. Yeah, I, I get it. It's a valid life choice. And if everybody chose to be a pacifist, things would go better in this world. But it is impossibly dull to watch this play out on TV. I mean, please, God, just go kill something already and stop talking. I mean, there's a reason why there were no heartfelt letters from pacifists in that big Civil War documentary. April 17, 1862, Turkey Run, Virginia. Dearest Mother, it is with a heavy yet resolute heart that I take up my quill to convey the state of my soul in these troubled times. From the solace of my countryside abode, the echoes of war reach my sensitive ear. Like distant thunder, reminding me of the horrors that beset our nation. While the ceaseless cannonade reminds me of the battle each day, I tend to my garden and I stand firm in my unwavering commitment to peace. I rest my head each night secure in the knowledge that mine is as noble a sacrifice as those who march forth toward battle. The guns are firing again, dear mother, and as my brethren face the grim specter of death, I sit here sipping my chamomile tea, secure in my conviction that my absence from the field of folly will somehow inspire the warring factions to lay down their arms and embrace fully the fellowship of man. Rest assured, mother, that I shall not waver. I assure you my commitment to peace is as steadfast as my avoidance of anything 
remotely resembling physical exertion. I must go now to pen verses that seek to heal the festering wounds of hatred and division, hoping that while they remain unread, my words may resonate and kindle the spark of peace in savage hearts hardened by strife. Ezekiel Pumpernickel, poet, philosopher, pacifist. At least Teen Wolf's pacifist werewolf didn't bore us to death with it. How'd you do that? It's Pagua, a martial art that takes the path of least resistance. You think you're going to beat me without fighting? I think you're going to beat yourself. Deucalion only got this one brief exchange, and it was easy as a viewer to miss what a big deal this was for his character. Less than a year before this, he was passively letting Theo kill the Legion of Substitute Superheroes just because Deucalion wanted to help Scott. You know that, Theo? That's the secret to taking power. Pain. Take that pain. Take their life. Take their power. Now, a year before that, he'd been the ultimate narcissistic murder proponent. I am the Alpha of Alpha. I am the Apex of Apex Predators. I am Death, Destroyer of Worlds! I am the Demon Wolf! So, post-Epiphany Deucalion was a shock and did not ring true or logical to me as a viewer at the time. Maybe I've matured a bit since then, but his position and his lack of action seem a lot more profound to me now. And when I look back at it with all this context, his death might actually make a lot more sense. I mean, the big argument was that Deucalion should have healed from this. The other big argument is that someone should take this moment to 187 Deucalion and steal his Alpha Spark. I can't help anyone who holds on to that core misunderstanding of what Teen Wolf is about. But looking at just the death and taking into consideration the martial arts and philosophy that Deucalion has been studying and living his life by, I now believe that Deucalion let himself die. Scott! Scott! None of us are going to survive this. Of course, the meta explanation was that the writers wanted the hunter war to be a genuine threat. And when you want a genuine threat, you have to kill off an important and well-loved character. But in-universe, given that Deucalion has professed his pacifist nature and his chosen fighting style is more yin than yang, by willingly enduring the pain and refusing to heal himself, Deucalion is making a statement about the true cost of violence and his willingness to pay the ultimate price for his commitment to non-violence. He may well have allowed this to happen, this act of self-sacrifice, so his example could serve as an inspiration to the others and highlight the depth of his pacifist convictions.